Hi, girl. How are you? Good. Happy Thursday, y'all. It's uh, we're so excited <laughs> to have you for day two for another photo editing stream. Um, Sizi Dara Ekpo. I got it right this time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I love it. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful name. Your na you. entire name is gorgeous. Aww, so thank you. <laughs> so excited to have you. Thank you guys so much for all of you who are joining just now. Um, please say hi in the chat and let us know where you're watching from. Always so exciting to see where everyone's at. It's awesome. Where are you yes. at, Idara? I am in hot. Actually, it's not hot today. I think it's just <laughs> the rain. So I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Nice, nice. Okay. <laughs> it usually can be pretty hot, though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. We've got some people chiming in. Hi, Cody. Hi, Anika. Uh, hi, Umacorn. Sean. Hi, Paco. <laughs> <laughs> Got lots of people in the chat today. Uh, so exciting. Yay. Well, I, we had such an amazing day yesterday. If you didn't catch that, there is a replay available. Um, you know, Idara took us through some of her editing process uh, for her self-portrait Sunday, right? Her, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So cool. It was so, it, it, it's, again, it was, I really, really had so much fun and I really loved how engaged everybody was because it's so awkward for me to edit my own face. <laughs> a live stream but it was a lot of fun yesterday oh so much fun well before we talk a little bit more about you just wanted to do a couple of housekeeping things um first of all uh, the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges are still happening at 9 a.m. every day, every weekday with Voodoo Val. So if you wanted to challenge yourself, um, watch those replays. They're available now. And um, today is also a little bit of a different day. We're going to have an artist spotlight. So make sure to stick around for that. Later on, we'll be checking out someone's portfolio, hyping them up, and, and super excited to see their work. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure to come on over to Behance because the chat is available to you. You can interact with Idara. You can ask her mm -hmm. questions. She is a wealth of knowledge. So please ask her. Um, we love to chat and engage with you also. Um, yeah. Idara, do you want to take it away for anyone who's new to you today? Yeah. Um, um, please, please let us know. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> hi, <is> everyone. Idara? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, my name is Idara Ekpo. I am a portrait photographer currently based in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, a lot of my work focuses on capturing blackness in different forms right and different yes. and it's with the medium of photography and so i've been shooting for almost six years now um i really focus on ways that i can incorporate um whether that's visual storytelling yesterday we touched a lot about you know self-portraiture and how i can really capture myself in my different forms and really show my identity yeah. as a black woman um and so we'll spend today really touching on you know we'll kind of recap from yesterday with self-portrait sunday um, and then move into how I actually kind of plan some of my projects. So if you head over to my website, you'll see that I have a number of different projects listed here. Uh, one of the ones that we'll go over today is my personal favorite. It's Ugh. my baby. We literally were just talking about this before the stream. It's your desktop wallpaper. And yes. you guys, when she puts prints out of these, you need to oh, snag them ASAP, no. like ASAP as possible. It's so <laughs> dreamy. And that's why we called it dreams. And so I, I'm going to, we're going to walk through desert like, dreams, oh, literally desert dreams, honestly. Ugh. Um, but we're going to walk through um, one of the shots from, uh, from this project. I'll talk about visual storytelling and how yes. you can really take, um, bring different components and what techniques you can use to really bring a concept to life. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to dive into that with you guys today. Yay! We're so excited. Um, we've already got some people in the chat saying hi. hi. Um, Jean is from Kansas City. Um, Sean is from Germany. Oh, oh wow. So cool. Oh. 
Um, Denise from Sacramento. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so exciting. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm ready to get started. Thank you, Cody, for plugging in all those links and for her Instagram. Go follow oh, her yes. right now. My it's Instagram. oh yeah, it's itty. Yes. Um, I D Y. So check out all of her work. You'll see a lot of her face and, and you'll get to recognize her pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, okay, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and yesterday when we were editing, we were spending all of our time in both Lightroom Classic as well as Photoshop. We will be doing the exact same thing today. Um, I have a couple of different images. So I want to spend some time probably editing this shot. So this is one of the shots you probably... It's a different shot from this shoot. <laughs> so we'll spend some time to edit this shot. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about lighting and how that can play a part in your photos as well. And then I will also take you guys through a recent project that I'm currently editing um, and kind of what components went into that as well. So hopefully that's so a full packed exciting. agenda for today. percent, hundred percent. And you guys are in for a treat. Um, you know, your work is amazing and you're super Thank talented. You. So I'm excited to see a little bit more of your process, you yeah. know, even as outside from your self portraits, which yeah. are equally amazing, but you know, so fun, Thanks. always Thank good you. to see people's process. So yeah. please ask questions. You guys engage with us in the chat. Let us know, you know, what you're liking and, and <laughs> yeah, ask away. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Perfect. So, um, basically when I talk about visual storytelling, that's really, for me, it's taking some kind of idea, concept, story, and finding a way that you can really bring it to life in an image, right? And so for this specific shoot, I called it Dream on sisterhood, right? So the sisterhood that I feel like I have within other Black women in my community and really wanting to show like the kind of togetherness that we have. Also wanting it to be in a space that was really just dreamy and captivating. So the first thing that I thought of was one, the location, right? The location yes. has to be dreamy. Like it needs to look good yes. and almost be like, oh my goodness, where is that? And that was this location. So we actually drove to the dunes in California. It was about a three hour drive. Oh my so gosh. Where in California is it located? I think it's like, I really couldn't tell you, honestly. Oh I just know that it's three hours. So it's it's not far from me from Phoenix area, but it was right. Like okay. Hour. That's not um, bad. No, not bad at all. And it's just like the sand dunes that are out there. Oh, and so amazing. it was absolutely beautiful. So gorgeous. Um, and so there was that component was one fiction, finding the location. We wanted to shoot towards sunset. And so, cause we, I really wanted to try to get some of the sunset, the colors in the, in the sky, et cetera. You can tell I kind of shot a little bit later than I wanted to. I didn't get much. And so we'll try to bring back some of Got this it. sunset into the photo. Yeah. Um, another component that I wanted to consider is like, you know, how am I going to dress the models? I am not a stylist <laughs> by no means. <laughs> I can style myself and I can give you tips. That's about it. But um, I, what I did is I just knew I wanted them to be identical. I didn't want you to have to like, focus in on who the actual model was but I wanted it to just be an overall cohesive look yeah well even wow. by the choice of of kind of covering their eyes too mm -hmm. or just you know it's a little a little ominous mm -hmm. um like almost exactly. like you could see yourself in one of these women exactly and that's uh, I love I love it when like anyone <laughs> like gets what I'm trying to do artist to artist yes, yes. <laughs> But that's why I didn't want you to see their fo their faces. That's why um, you know you have the eyes, the, ha the hats that are covering their eyes. They're dressed the same way, um, and then also again focusing on that 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 concept of togetherness, support. A lot of the poses from this series was you know them touching or doing similar things to one yeah. another. It's almost like line. this mirroring effect too, mm -hmm. where like these two women are seeing themselves in mm -hmm. each other too, mm -hmm. like even just by the the. Uh, identicalness of them <laughs> absolutely so Amazing. um oh i love it i love it okay so we're gonna go ahead and start <laughs> editing this photo now the one thing so yesterday when we were talking about editing um i really focused on like lightroom for me sometimes it's just kind of like going in doing some basics but i do the bulk of the work in photoshop so that's right. some cases there's other cases where i might want to use a preset so as y'all can see over here i have <laughs> a bunch load of presets some that i you know got or purchased a lot of these ones that you see they're like brown tones one two three four five six like that. yes <laughs> those are different ones that i've made same thing with like the melanin ones i'm trying to work on a preset pack 
um, specifically for portraits and different like darker skin complexions. Yeah. So you'll see all of this down here. Amazing. Um, but essentially a preset is great because it's just um, safe settings. So instead of me going through and like figuring out what settings I want, I can really come over here and figure out what preset I think might serve as a solid base for my photo. Yeah. So it's just the foundation. So um, I'm going to go ahead and look, I think I wanted, let's see, I made a, a note so I don't forget. <laughs> We've got a couple was... people saying hi to ah. Robert says, hi, Dara. Hi, Robert. Um, Uma Korn's from the Netherlands. Fairy says hi. Oh, um, oh interesting. Sean says, uh, for this photo, did you bring a rake like in golf or just no. Photoshop the footprints out? No. So that's the thing. This is the raw image. Like, I don't remember how we got this to look the way it did i didn't bring a rake i think i just had them like kind of jump to the spot yeah yeah <laughs> um because there's no footprints i don't remember what happened this photo was taken last march but this is the raw image i didn't bring a rake or anything you can see wow. like for example in this shot from there you can see all the footprints right right i just I didn't really care to clean up all those imperfections, <laughs> but this one, I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, that looks amazing. I got lucky um, there. <laughs> Jay Boogie says, I just love that location. <laughs> yes, it's just, oh, I've only been- And he been says the outfits are amazing. <laughs> like, yay, thanks. Shout out to Zara. <laughs> <laughs> Uma Korn says, yes, very editorial. Anika says, love Idara's energy. Oh. Everyone's everyone's loving it. Yay, awesome. Like, is this the Death Valley area? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we couldn't tell you. <laughs> I, could, I really couldn't. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use this Melanin 9 one. Excuse the names, but I just really love how the color that it brings in the sand that kind of mimics the color of the mm -hmm. dunes that I saw there. And then now, um, as you can see, all these settings have popped up. You can see some of that sun, the sun setting that was occurring coming back into the photo opposed to where it was before. Like, right. We didn't see nothing there. Now we got a little color. We got something to work with there. Yeah. Um, the sand, love that there's more color and like just depth to that. And so what I'm gonna start to do, it's a little on the dark side. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the exposure just a okay. tad bit and might bring <laughs> up the shadows so I can see some of their faces a little bit more. I don't wanna, Again, the purpose isn't to identify them, but you do want to see like facial features. So I'm going to do that. Same thing with my shadows. Cody was saying, did they jump? <laughs> I think I honestly, I can't remember, but they must have because the only, <laughs> there's, there, you see this little like dip right The here. little dip right there. Yeah. <laughs> Steven, uh, Steven Booth was just like, quotes, models required, must be able to levitate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Honestly, if you're looking for models Ooh. that can lev <laughs> levitate, I'm sure these two were the ones to go. Like, I can't yes. even remember. Um, um, Fairy's asking, uh, do you ever challenge yourself by shooting JPEG for your photos? Oh, see, um, you know, no. <laughs> Once you go raw, you can't you go You can't back. go back. When I, now let me tell you, when I started shooting, I did oh, used to just shoot it for JPEG because I didn't know any better. So I just kind of did that and I would make it work. Um, but since the day I discovered shooting in RAW, I have not turned back. I think it'd be interesting to kind of, because I know sometimes I might rely heavily on what I can do in post. Like, okay, right. this is like this, but I can go and, you know, tr fix things up. It'd be cool to be like, okay, let me see what I can get just straight out of the camera and know that I can't do too much editing to it anyway because of the file right, size. Right, right. But mm, not ready for that challenge. <laughs> yeah, if someone else commented, yes, why limit your dynamic range? Yeah. I mean, you know. Like, you saw the sand, like, it was looking real kind of, you know, pale and, you know, kind of sad. Now, yeah, you got a little now, life now to it. Now it's popping. <laughs> you know, now it's popping. Bring a little bit of color in there. <laughs> So we're gonna start off with that. I like where this photo is at currently. I'm gonna go into um, Photoshop. So I'm gonna right click, edit in and send the photo to Photoshop um, because I really wanna focus on one, bringing in the the color of the, the, the sunset a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I do wanna get rid of, I know there was a little mountain that was peeking through here. To me, it's kind of distracting because it's not, it's just like a small portion of the photo. So I'm going to actually take care of that and bring that out. We might attack this little dip that's right there <laughs> behind that model and do a slight bit of color grading. 
Love it. So, let's so exciting. See. Yay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. I just duplicated my layer. So again, if you are on a Mac, you can Command J or you can just drag, come down to the little plus here and it'll add a new layer. Nice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up. So I'm gonna call this clean up. Oh, that's an X, that's not a C. All right, there, clean up. <laughs> so we're gonna clean up this. <laughs> Um, Noorsh just said, shooting JPEG only is like having skimmed milk rather than full cream. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like, why would you, why? Like, <laughs> like why? <laughs> and Cody says, yeah, that warmth added to the image looks yes. so nice. hundred yes. percent. Well, also it like fixes their skin tone too. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. it actually brings out the real tone of their skin exactly. versus in that previous one, you know, looked more washed out. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been more difficult if you had shot that in JPEG. That would have been 100% more difficult. It would have been difficult. It would mm -hmm. have been like beyond difficult. And I don't know what I would have like done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I would have been just in post like, well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go over here and grab my clone stamp tool. Okay. Going to reduce the size a bit. And I'm not perfect at this. You know, it's just kind of, I also feel like I'm just going to try my best. You know, we're going to just kind of copy one spot and bring it over and try yeah. to clone out that little. Are you doing, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's, it's coming, great. you know, it's coming together, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes these things are just like trial and error. Yes. So we're gonna kind of clean this up a bit. I wanna be careful with their dresses and their, her leg right here. I'm gonna actually get a little closer mm -hmm. and Clone. Bam. Come there on. Come on. Let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. Dang. Now let's Looking talk about good. let's talk about the levitation. Like <laughs> levitation at a thousand. A thousand, <laughs> a thousand percent. percent. The next thing I'm gonna do is clone out this part right here. Um, because I just want it to be like a seamless kind of all the sand. So let's see how I'm going to do that. I'm going to start off with the with the sky. Oh yeah. And just kind of bring that. And there sometimes the thing that sucks sometimes is like when you're cloning things, it takes patience and I just, I lack it. Like <laughs> I lack it. Like I just, there are times where I'm just like, you know, it's what? also a bit of a guessing game too, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It definitely is, but there we go. So we're kind of cleaning that up a bit. Nice. I'm going to copy this side of the dune and just kind of. There you go. There we go. See, we got, we got a little something happening for us here. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's still so much left. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you talk to yourself while you're editing? Yes. <laughs> That's why it's so hard for me not to do that now. I'm just like, you guys are going to get the full raw Idara. That's just yes. gonna... Hey, the raw Idara is better than the JPEG Idara. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So see, that's actually coming together pretty nicely. Yeah. All right. So we're going to come back here and keep. <laughs> Cody's like, the... bam. <laughs> come on. All right. Let's see. Come on, I'm proud uh, of myself. Jay Boogie's see. asking what camera did you use for this? I one? shot this with um, a Canon 60. Nice. Um, and then I used a Sigma 35 lens, I believe, for this. Um, and one thing that I quickly learned, so um, especially with the other shot that I'll show you from the shoot, mm -hmm. Canons, or at least that, that Canon that I had was not great in low light. So we try to start shooting, I think, um, we shot it maybe it was like five six o'clock like towards sunset and light was leaving very very quickly and i just remember like <clears throat> i think like these shots like you could just see progressively how much worse <laughs> the lighting was getting throughout the rest yeah. of the remainder of the day um so i'm grateful that my little 60 was able to do what it needed to do yes but it was a struggle for sure yeah yeah, some sometimes it's it's tough. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That looks so good. Come on, so bam, before, bam, after. So we've already cleaned up. We took care of that. 
Awesome. So I'm happy with that. What Amazing. I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and see what, you know, what colors we can add. You know, can we really bring in more color into that the mm. sand? So I'm going to go to, let's try our yellows. And like, just like yesterday, I just really mess with the sliders until I get something that I like. So there's no science to it. It's just to, I really like that. So yeah, bring in a little bit more. Very nice. Up. Bam, come on, ooh, Bam. come on. Mm -hmm. If I want to make sure that it's not, just like what we talked about yesterday, I'm noticing that it's impacting the model's skin and bring, yeah, I don't want them to look like that. So I'm gonna, use my eraser tool, bring this down, and I'm just kind of come in and... Yeah, bring back it, some of that color. Yeah, bring back that color. A little less yellow. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it Very to nice. their hands too. Again, sometimes I'm not, like I could really try to get the fingertips, but you know it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have just like one look for this, for this shoot? Just I did. the one outfit, nice. Yeah, so basically I actually did this shoot with a friend and we both had two different ideas. So I came with the look that I had, he came with the look that he had, and then and we had picked the models we wanted to use, which they were, they were just friends. So we, nice. uh, so he went first and he did their, his first look with them. And then um, I did mine afterwards. Very nice. Okay. Viola says, hiya. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm going to go in another selective color and I'm actually going to go to my reds and see if I can, yeah, just make their skin a little dark. <laughs> Cody says, if we add two suns, it'll look like Tatooine. I don't know what that is. Someone tell me. What, what, exactly, what is that? <laughs> it's spelled T-A-T-O-O-I-N-E, but yeah. I have no idea what that is. Cody, please explain. Yes. <laughs> Cody's our awesome moderator. He's, he, <laughs> he's the best. He's great. Oh, I love, I love. Okay, so we have that. The next thing I'm going to do is I kind of want to, let's see, sharpen some aspects of this image. So actually, I'm going to hold off that. So we've now done, we cleaned up. Yep. We went and added some, you know, a little bit yellow, of, of yellow in yellow our photo. Tones. Mm hmm Because I really love <laughs> Okay, the way people are telling us that it's from Star Wars. Okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, I have not so watched sorry. Star Wars. I, I am so sorry. I've like watched I've admitted this one. on a stream before and I got hammered. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I'm right have there you watched you. it? No, I've watched I've Oof. I've watched one of this, like one of the newer Star Wars, like uh -huh with i don't remember what the actor's name the british guy the i don't know i've seen one or two of them but like <laughs> i i can't i can't talk about it so <laughs> i know you guys are our apologies are my sorry bad. so sorry <laughs> <laughs> like please oh don't 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 flame us don't flame, don't flame us. us oh okay so tatooine i hope i'm saying that right is luke skywalker's home got oh. it Okay, all right, all right. I know who, we all know who Luke Star oh, Skywalker is. We know, is, we so. know, we know. <laughs> so that okay. we know, that much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So I have chat coming in through. <laughs> Come on, we love to see it. And <laughs> the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to see what I can do to play around with the colors in the sky. Sometimes I'll do this with my photos just to play around. If I don't like it, then I can just delete the layer. But I'm gonna add a okay. new layer and. I know I could probably use like their gradient to actually, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know. Oh no. Oh girl. <laughs> Wrong way. <laughs> you know what? We're going to do it the way, oh, ooh. we're going to do it the way I know how to, that I, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go to my <laughs> brush okay. tool and I'm going to try to pick up the color. I want this to be more of a blue because I want it to go from like, actually I think more of like a purple to blue to yellow or ye blue okay. to yellow kind of like a you know a slight effect there so let's yeah yeah see. yeah what do we have here so I just kind of will come pick up like I know this is one color down here I'm gonna make this more just a little blue. bit more saturated yeah mm -hmm. yeah bring like that color that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up I'm gonna bring this opacity down because I don't want to be hit with too much color at once 
I'm gonna make this brush really big <laughs> and I'm just gonna come in. Okay, there you and go. Add some color in the sky there. And then if you want, you can always, again. That's the beauty of a, of a layer. Yep. On a separate layer. On a Love separate it. layer. <laughs> you can bring down the opacity a bit as well. So that's one color right there. So you can see how that added in some color. So yes. I'm gonna call that blue. Blue, nice. Now I wanna go into, <clears throat> add another layer. Let's go and try to add like, more of i really love this i want to leave there's this like an purple. orangey yeah there's like some i really love but like what would even be the color in the middle that's what i'm trying room. to i'm like is it like a blue purple to or like i'm right. kind of kind of i think or so like i don't yeah let's <laughs> let's oh that's a lot hold on <laughs> again doing this on separate layers is really great because yes. you can if you don't like it, you can clean it up and it doesn't affect what you originally had earlier. That's actually- <laughs> Cody's saying, she's saying, oh no, the new Star Wars movies only. And then they're all saying, I guess we have homework. I guess oh, we have homework. Okay. We gotta watch. All right. All right. We gotta watch Star Wars. We'll check back in. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know, what, like, where, where, where should I start? That's yeah, where should question. we start? Tell us in the chat, where should we start? Is this something that we can edit while we watch or do we have to like be fully immersed? Yeah, do I have to like pay attention? Yes. No, I, like, I, of course I'm gonna pay attention. Oh, that yes. was so wrong. Like, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, does my focus yes. need to 1000% be there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like everyone is so disappointed in us. 100% <laughs> they are. And one of the other moderators too, Voodoo Val, she's a big Star Wars person. So for sure, <laughs> they were like, good thing she's not here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Spare us, guys. Spare us. Spare us, please. Please. I promise you I'll try. I'll try to do better. We'll try. We'll try. <laughs> I'm going to go into this orangey. Ooh, j is asking, do you ever edit your photos on Lightroom or Lightroom Classic? You're in so, Lightroom Classic, classic. earlier, I, right? Yep. I was in Lightroom Classic. So the reason why, I kind of go back and forth between the two. I, I think when Lightroom came out like the newer version the, cloud version the cloud version i was just already used to using classic yeah. um but i like cloud because if i'm editing like on an ipad then it's i don't have to worry about you know grabbing my hard drive like just because it's in the cloud it'll automatically right. show up there so that's 1000 percent easier and that's also great if i am editing like maybe like a couple of photos like i don't have to insert like a whole shoot yeah um just like maybe like 10 15 photos that i've selected and i'm just gonna right. go ahead and do that and i can edit from my ipad if i want to and i know that everything syncs together nice um the one thing I like about classic is like, I said this yesterday, I get trigger happy. So I'm just like, pew, 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 the whole time throughout yes. my shoot. <laughs> so I just like, I like classic because I could just dump it in there, open and create a new catalog. So it's, it's organized and I'll just dump everything in there. And then I'll go through and just be like, whatever I don't want, I'll get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just kind of easier to select through, for me to select through um, some of the images that I shot. So that's how I Absolutely. kind of go about that. Love it. That's really bright. I don't really want it to be. So I can maybe go back to that color and then bring down the opacity. <laughs> what do y'all prefer? Do you guys prefer yeah, let classic us know. Or, or cloud? Yes. I think, or what are they call it? It's Lightroom CC, right? It's Lightroom CC. Lightroom okay. CC or Lightroom Classic. Let us know in the chat. Yes. Um, some people are like, yeah, we're just a little disappointed. <laughs> but um, Gareth <laughs> says we should start with, uh, let's see. So four, five, and then six, I'm assuming. And then Cody says start with episode four. So okay. that's the th I think that's what confuses me is the fact that like everyone has different opinions about how we yeah. should watch something. And it's like, well, now I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> um, Robert's asking if you've ever used the sky replacement in edit sometime. Oh, I actually haven't ever used the sky replacement. I saw like a tutorial for it and it looks wild. Oh my goodness. I've never, and I usually like, and I think this is like one of the, every now and then I'll incorporate the sky, but for the most part, I usually don't. And so I right. wonder what that would have looked like for this shot. Yeah. I know. 
let me see let me put sky sometimes I feel like I make things so much harder for myself and like oh there's like a <laughs> shortcut for it oh great to hear but you know what like it, that's the beauty of photoshop and and of art right it's like yeah everyone can come to their own path and like everyone has their own way of doing things and exactly. like no way is the right way really exactly it's whatever yeah. works for you exactly 100 percent. all right so let's see what we got here so this is the image that we had pulled from Lightroom, the cleanup that we did, the color correction that we did, just grading that image and making it a little bit more yellow tone. Absolutely. And then the, the subtle sky that we just kind of yeah. added a little bit more oomph to. Yeah. So I'm really liking how this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. <laughs> I don't know why, but when you go to exit out, that like gives me like a little like, oh, is she deleting all her work? But I know it asks you to save it. I don't know. Like, I'm just that's like, God forbid there's one day that I'm not paying attention. I just can't. I'm just so used to just X save. Like, I, I like that to live life. That gives me a little anxiety. Not going to lie. <laughs> I like to live life on the edge, you know, like, you know, just risk just a little bit, just some risk, you know? <laughs> All right, so this is our before image. You guys ready? This is before. That is after. Oh my gosh. Come on, isn't that dreamy? Like perfect. Come on. I love it. It's so good. I am, I'm actually, oh, I have not edited this photo. I'm, I think it's even probably dead similar to the original on my website of this shot. Yeah, it's basically oh similar gosh. to it. Look at A that. A little bit. So there's actually, more color the, in the sky i think yeah there's more color sure. in the sky here but the colors are pretty wow. similar as far as everything else mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely it's always interesting to see how like when you edit something like a year ago and then where it's at now like yes um you kind of see how you grow with your editing style your eye really does change and things start to shift and you're like okay like I at that time I really wanted the sky to be like poom poom like really in your face. Yes, yes. Today, I just want a little subtle, you more know. More subtle, more subtle. More subtle. Yes, like but, we were talking about yesterday, like learning how to pull back. Yes, pull back because when needed. sometimes, like I know I do this a lot of the times. I get a little color happy, <laughs> and I'm just like adding all the colors, and then I come back to it and I'm like, ooh, ooh what what is that? Like, yes. why does that look the way it does? Awesome. So I'm going to export I love I'm it. Like, um, like Jay that. Boogie says, I use the Lightroom Classic. I'll have to admit mm. that I use Lightroom Classic too. OK. <laughs> I think it's probably this like personal preference. I kind of go back. The reason why I really love the CC version is because, or sorry, this is class. CC is this one, right? Or is this um, is classic. This and one's classic. Other one. Okay, it's the other creative one. Creative Cloud, yes. Got it. Creative. There we go. I really love that version for when I'm editing on my iPad because there's <laughs> sometimes when I don't want to be sitting at my desktop and I just want to lay in bed <laughs> or sit on the couch and not have to feel like I have this hot laptop on my lap, you know, which I shouldn't even be having it on my lap. <laughs> um, so I really like that um, that aspect of it. But that is that image. How are y'all feeling? I feel like we did a good job. It looks there. so good. Jay Boogie says that it gives me a movie effect, which 100%, <gasps> there is that no. cinematic vibe. <gasps> Listen, the cinematic vibe. Let me, let me tell you. Idara is something. known for this, okay? <laughs> let me. Let me this These look is like up stills my, from a movie. Come on, this okay? is out my alley. <laughs> the one thing, oh, I wanted to mention this yesterday. So, when someone had said who i don't i wish i remember can credit who was the fir first person to tell me that they my images gave them that cinematic and kind of movie like feel mm -hmm. um i love to watch movies and i Not love star wars, movies <laughs> no no <laughs> Not star wars though. i love to watch movies sometimes specifically for the color oh, grading like literally yes. just for the tones in the movies like i remember the first movie that i actually started to pay attention to colors and the way that can really like impact the way you feel the overall mood for the scene was i think it was moonlight um a movie that's directed by barry jenkins it's such mm -hmm. like the colors the coloring oh. throughout that movie is so absolutely beautiful beautiful I loved that. Um, there's another movie called The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Like those type of films, like I literally would watch them 
And I would take notes of what tones I really love and those images that I can now put it, try to mimic in my work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I can see you watching kind of like Wes Anderson movies Mm -hmm. or like, um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you watch the series Queen's Gambit. Yes, but the that too. colors, colors are so the, beautiful. In the sixties, the whole that whole oh. era, the everything. Oh my goodness! Guys, so I please tell me you watched that. Yes, I absolutely. When I tell you, I here's your the, homework. <laughs> watch the Queen's Gambit. Yes. I literally watched that in like maybe two days. I literally binged, binged. watched that entire series. Mm-hmm. But I, it's it's stuff like that that really helps bring the inspiration for 100%. the coloring in my work. Um, so I really love, that's why it gets really excited when any, anyone's like, oh, it gives me that movie feel, a cinematic feel, because I literally watch movies <laughs> to see what I can take. And maybe one day, I always wonder if one day I'm going to get into like, um, like film, film it, 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 oh. and just so I can, just so I can do some color grading because I, I've tried every now and then just like practice, but I really want to work on that craft because I love motion, oh, just motion amazing. in general. And I just I can love definitely see you getting into that yes. for sure. We got to oh, we got to make it happen. Amazing. Love it. Oh. <laughs> love it. Um everyone's commenting saying, "Yep, uh, such a pleasing photo. That's Debbie. Robert says it looks Yay. great. It looks like it's sand. Debbie, cinematic and editorial. Fairy yes. says this photo feels alive to me. Yes, um, alive. Oh, yes. Cody says it looks like, looks like it could go right in a trendy fashion magazine. Um, shot from a movie. Colors feel mood. And when you add a perfect soundtrack to these three factors, it's like another world. Exactly. Yes. Oh, yes. You got y'all know the vibes. Okay. You know the vibes. Y'all know the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Ooh. goodness. So the next thing I want to show y'all is focusing. So one of the things that I've also been playing with is light. So when I first started shooting, I used to run away from light. Like when I tell you I would run, if it wasn't just the overcast, even lighting, I would run and look for shade because like I need, I don't need shadows on my subject's faces. I don't need them to be like squinting in the sun. Like I kind of want to stay away from it. Um, I recently did, this was actually a birthday shoot that I did for a friend. Um, and I really wanted to, pl- it again, with the Arizona heat, you can't really run away from the sun. So we shot like <laughs> 9 a.m., I think it was 9 or 10. And so the sun was sunning, like it was blazing. It was doing what it intended to do. Um, and so I kind of wanted to play off of that. And so we actually, when you're doing shoots, it's really like, get creative and you know if your model is up to it you know maybe have them step on something but be safe because this is a little ledge like if she was over here it would have been a different story so you want to be safe yes safety (laughs) first (laughs) safety first but you can see like the sun was coming from probably this direction you can see the shadow that her hand I asked her to bring her hand up because I really love the shadow that it casted on her skin um and just really loved how again like the shadow that's coming in the shade that's coming in from this direction as well love it so we're gonna do this photo next one of the things that i really so i'm gonna use a preset for this as well one of the things i do want to do is i kind of want to clean this up again some of these images i really like that kind of dreamy look Mm -hmm. as far as like where where are you like that looks like such a beautiful location it looks like an architectural like you know it's Lance, part of, like place I yeah it's just very cool <laughs> it's literally like if lots you guys, of lines lots of lines. lines lots of leading lines um if you live in arizona this was actually on asu's campus there's a building i think it's like a museum wow so i just we kind of went there on a saturday nobody <sighs> said anything to us and we just kind of went ham with it <laughs> i love it this is this completely unedited completely unedited girl this is the raw image girl. yes yes this already looks amazing like already the raw image already we're, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna play around with it see right, what we can do i want i kind of want to focus in on one the background so we're going to clean this up i really want to extend this out so i don't see this i kind of want it all to be cohesive with this wall mm-hmm. um i want to play around with the color of the sky so we'll do that and i really want this photo to really be really rich and dark and deep um so i have this preset do, 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 which I think I called it like dark tones or something. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at it, it's really dark. So we're going to bring yeah. up the exposure a bit. And you can okay. see like now she's looking really red. So we're going to kind of mess around with some of, I'm going to come down to my reds and or my 
HSL sliders and just kind of mess around <laughs> with these colors as well. Gilmer says, hello from Brazil. Hi. <laughs> so cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, if you guys are just popping in, we're here with Idara. Um, she's an amazing photographer, creative director um, based out of Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. And she's showing a little bit of her process in Lightroom and in Photoshop. Um, lots of fun color grading and editing. And, you know, you can already see it's very, very cinematic vibes here. Yes. <laughs> so... If you're joining us on uh, YouTube, come on over to behance.net slash live. Um, yes. That way you can interact with her, ask her questions and, and all that good stuff. So yes. <laughs> awesome. So we added our preset. I made a couple of adjustments. I kind of brought down the vibrance a little bit. Her skin was really, really red. Um, and then I kind of messed with the saturation sliders as well. And so I'm kind of solid with where this is now. I wanted her skin tone to be a little bit deeper. Um, I, with this preset, I really messed around with the blue. So you can see that like the sky, I really, really want the sky to kind of pop a lot more. And so you can do this with the sliders Ooh. here too. So if I really wanted to change the color, I could to more of a purple, if I wanted it to be more of a teal that could happen. I really like the teal color, but I'm yeah. going to keep it here first. Ooh. The teal is really speaking The teal to me. is really pretty. It's really, really pretty. So let's leave the teal for now. We might do some extra, we might mess around with it again in Photoshop, but I like where this is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, edit in, and y'all know where we're going. We're going yes. to Photoshop. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> we are making Thank you, Cody, way. for plugging in Idara's Instagram. Go follow Come on, her. Come on, Cody. Cody is just doing all the right things. Yes. Like we I love, love her. We it. love her. <laughs> yes. Cody, like, come on now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and copy my background again. And we're going to call this clean up just like we did before. We're going to go ahead and kind of clean up our image. Again, I'm going for that cinematic. I, I just don't want any distractions. And this right here is distracting me. Um, kind of like the rain. I'm so, sure this probably came from like it rained probably early that mm. week. So I want to clean that up a bit as well. Yeah. This so, kind of has like, it's giving me like, almost like a female hero vibes. Like, yeah, like, super like she's hero. like on a ledge, you know, <laughs> like a little like Spider-Man vibes, like kind of just like, she just landed. She's, you know, about to save the world probably. Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, one thing that I love, love about this shot is just, again, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but when you're shooting with somebody, the most like difficult thing I find sometimes is like, what is a model going to do with their hands? Right. Yes. Like, where do you want them to place it? And I really find that finding ways to use your arms, your hands to frame your body or to create some kind of like, like additional lines really yes. help. So I like how her left arm is a little, it's extended. Her right arm is up here. So you kind of have like, like you can just see how your eyes can lead from her fingers up until her head or even vice versa. Um, so you kind of want to create some more dimension with, you know, body language as well. So if you can play around, I love just hands framing face, you know, some way, somehow yes. is really yes. helpful. Awesome. Do you, so. when you're directing somebody, do you, mm -hmm. do you tell them or do you show them like what's, you know, I usually, so it's kind of. It's kind of more so of a collaboration because sometimes right. I might like she 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 models so she so models so she yeah she'll come, she knows sometimes she'll, she'll she was the one that bent down she was like I want to ah. like I and I really liked that and I was like, okay bring your hand up you know so it's more so of a collaboration in that sense yeah. there's some people that like don't feel fully comfortable so I will kind of go based off of the vibe you know like oh let's try this let's try that and they're usually open to doing that until something comes I do love to direct just because. Um, your models don't see what's happening behind, right. you know, 100%. behind the camera. You see everything. And I find that when I don't engage the model, they're kind of left like in a limbo, like, oh, I hope everything came, came out well. <laughs> and I feel like it's important to, you know, one, give direction. So if you feel like, oh, like chin down a little bit or bring your hand here or move to the side, give that direction. Don't be afraid to talk to your model. Um, and then show them the shot. Be like, yo, like, this is what you look like. Cause it gets them excited and that yeah. kind of gets them a little bit more pumped up for the rest of the shoot. Yeah. And more reassurance. Like they're doing mm -hmm. the right thing or yeah. Mm -hmm. Like um, something like, yeah, I was telling you to do all this stuff. You might've felt a little odd, but look at the photo. Like yeah. <laughs> look at how snatched you look. It's look, great. Look, look how snatched you look, girl. All right. Yes. So we're going to take the clone stamp tool just like we did before. 
And I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna clone this part of the wall and just kind of drag it over. So you can see there. <laughs> Viola says, Cody don't play. Cody says, I got <laughs> all the links. Oh, she's the Cody best. Don't, Cody don't play. <laughs> Fairy's asking, how do you choose your lenses for each shot? Um, it's so my lens, so it's funny because I actually shot this photo with, um, I recently got Canon's 28 to 70 lens. Ooh. And so it's a, um, it's a zoom lens essentially, which allows you to go from 28 millimeters up to 70. Um, and I really love it because it's just one lens that I carry in my bag. Now yes. I used to carry a 35, a 50 an 85, like, and it's just so much equipment to carry around that yeah. I liked. Yeah. I made it a point for me to invest in one piece of glass. And I also had went mirrorless. So I went from using a DSL DSLR to a mirrorless camera and got that lens. So nice. that lens, I kind of, that's the only lens I use for a lot of my recent work that's with other people. Amazing. Self-portraits is still with my Canon 6D um, just because the lens on my, um, my mirrorless camera is very heavy on a yeah. tripod. So it doesn't yeah. really work. <laughs> Um, but the way I kind of decide, like even before this, before I got this lens, I just kind of look into like, you know, is there, do I want to bring my environment into my shot? Really? That's right. really it. If, if, if it's more of like, okay, I, the environment's cool, but I just want to focus on my subject, then I'll pull out, you know, my 50 or just more so go for a portrait. That's like a little bit closer up, whether it's a portrait of her face or more so focusing on her and not really her surrounding. Um, if I'm shooting in a location that's similar to like this one, or just like the photo that we just did at the dunes, like the location is beautiful, like utilize yeah. that. Yes. So you want to shoot wider. You want to bring that in because that adds a lot more to your photo, um, opposed to just like your model. So yeah. that's kind of how I decide what lens Love I want to use is that's if I want to, <laughs> yeah, if I want to bring in my environment or if I just kind of want to focus on the person that I'm shooting. Yeah. And, and and the thing is, is like, you know, I have, I always, especially before I got this lens, I would always um, bring both my 35 and my 50 and I would just go back and forth because it gives you two different perspectives as well. Mm -hmm. So definitely give yourself an opportunity to play around with different focal lengths and see what that does for you and your images. Yeah. Love that. So we're going to clean this Thank you for answering up. that. Girl, of course. That was a good question. That was a really good question. <laughs> And I feel like you answered it perfectly too, in the sense that like, it's about like, whether you want to bring in that environment mm -hmm. or not. Yep. Yeah. Jay Boogie says, position is everything. Position is everything. <laughs> Jay Boogie, you on the point. Come on. <laughs> He's also asking, they're also asking, do you have art lens for camera? Do I have um, do art lens? Again? I don't know. Art lens. Mm -mm. I don't like, like, I feel like I've heard this, of that. It's like, like a type of lens. I have a Let Sigma. I have a Sigma art lens. Right. I don't, right. I don't know. I'm not a technical person y'all. So uh, I could tell you the lenses that I have, but I can't tell you why I have them. <laughs> I just, <laughs> besides, you know what they look like, you know, what yes. the, the kind of image they're going to yes, produce. Exactly. That's, that's really it. Like I'm like 35, 1.4. Like that's really, those are the yes. only two factors. And honestly, I'm that's the, that's the lesson here. Even we were talking about this yesterday where like your equipment isn't doesn't make you any less of a photographer mm. or your lack of lack of knowledge, equipment. lack of knowledge, lack of equipment, lack of technical yeah. knowledge. Like mm -hmm. you just pick up that camera and go like, yep, that's literally know, just do your thing. <laughs> just do your thing. But what I'm shooting, but just so y'all know what I shoot with now is I have a Canon <coughs> EOS R. So uh -huh. I shoot, I shoot with that camera now. Um, and then I have the 28 to 70 RF lens. Cause that's the lens that would, um, I really I think it's like a one two point mm -hmm. two I think it's a two so the app it goes down to a, a 2.0 so I have that yes. I used to shoot with and I still sometimes do shoot with my Canon 60 and then I use a, a Sigma 35 millimeter art lens so that one's an art lens I know that for sure I don't know what it means but it's an art <laughs> lens if that's yeah what if, you, if anyone can explain what that yeah. means yeah <laughs> let um, us know and then i have a 50 um oh yeah jay boogie 50. said that that's what he meant oh and he okay says that he has a sigma 50 millimeter got it got it nice. yes so i have the 35 and i when i shoot with my i actually need to get an adapter for my um my um my eosr uh -huh. because i love that sigma lens so 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 much <laughs> okay, very nice so. 
thank you guys for all the questions yes. and everything. I love um, all the engagement. I know. Debbie's asking, how do you scout locations? Do you take a day just to drive and explore? Um, so it's kind of funny. So sometimes I'll just like, I'll just like, if I'm driving, I'll notice like one of the shoots that I'll show you guys after this one. Um, I literally had a location in mind. And while I, I had picked up my friends that were going to be in the shoot with me, mm -hmm. um, that were going to be my models, we were driving to said location and I passed another location oh, that I thought gosh. was better. <laughs> and so I literally said, you know what, let's go here. So that's one thing. Sometimes it's just like if I'm driving and I see something. Coincidence. Um, just coincidence. Um, other times I'll, you know, just kind of take time before like, especially if I'm shooting, like this was, she was a client that wanted to shoot with me for her birthday. So I Aww. can't, I didn't want to quickly, I wanted to come organize and know what I was doing. Um, and so I had an idea of what she was wearing and I just kind of like, I had been to this location before the way I found it was literally by just exploring. I think sometimes, um, especially me living here in Arizona, I love to always complain like, oh, there's nothing in Arizona. Like it's so boring here. <laughs> you know, there's no like cool locations, but then if you really just take time to just kind of take out, the time to look, yeah. just take the time, like drive around randomly. Like I, I have some friends that we used to always do that. We'll just drive around randomly and look for different locations. Um, and you just kind of save, I think on your iPhone, you can kind of save. Yeah. Like, if you just take a picture of the location mm -hmm. and then later on, you can like swipe up at least for iPhones, yep. then you can yes. swipe up and it takes you to that exact location that you yep. took that picture. Exactly. I always do that. Yep. Um, I find that to be so great. So then I'm like, awesome. then, I, then I'm ready when I'm ready to use that location. I know where I can refer back to it. Exactly. Exactly. Or sometimes awesome. I'll, sometimes I'll plan shoots just around the location. Like I'm yes. like, Oh, I really loved, um, you know, this place that I shot at or that I saw, let me plan a shoot around that. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, sometimes like the locations that you kind of would least expect, like, I don't know about you, but sometimes I like distress looking things. So like <laughs> you can, you can find like a corner or a little like area mm -hmm. like there. Yeah. You just have to kind of like change your perspective and, exactly. and, and like, you know, and the one thing I also love is like, sometimes yeah. you don't need to have like so many different locations. Like right. I've shot, I've shot at this place so many times <laughs> and each time it's like a different look that I find, oh, you know, it's a different idea or concept. Awesome. So you can have one location that every time you go there, you see something different. So that's the one thing as well, like explore the locations you usually go to and find ways to challenge yourself to see, okay, how can I see this spot? this area from a different perspective, you know? 100%. Yeah, love that. Um, Ferry's asking, team prime lens or team zoom lens? Ooh. So if you had asked me this prior <laughs> to, I got my new equipment in November. If you had asked me this before that point, I would have said prime lenses. I would yeah. have been like, yep, period. Like I need a prime, like, um, especially because a lot of the zoom lenses that I was seeing, they weren't you can't get like a 1.4 or like yeah. you know something of that, of that sort yeah now when i tell y'all man canon needs to find a way to sponsor your girl because what i tell you guys the canon 28 to 70 it's a <laughs> it's an expensive piece of glass i will say that is it or um maybe maybe i'm wrong i don't know but it, is yeah. it the 24 to 70 or the uh it's a 20 so the, there's a 24 to 70 there's a 28 that's the, to oh, 70 now too yeah yes there's a 28 to 70 so the 24 to oh 70 it was like the ef lens that people use yes. on like their their 5d mark fours yes. etc yes there's that lens it's been around for years yes now, i think it was like last year or the year before they introduced <gasps> the 28 to 70 and wow. it goes it's, it has an aperture it goes down to the aperture of two i think it's f2 and when yes. I tell you guys, not only like, does it work great in low light? So like you being able to utilize that F2, that's one amazing thing. But then I just ended up using that lens for everything. Like I, yeah. that's all I carry because I know that I can get, <clears throat> instead of me carrying around a 50, I can, you know, put the lens at 50. And I, I, if I want to, I can shoot it all the way down to an F2 if I, if I really care to, wow. you know? So I love that I can get, a, I can get a 50 out of it. flexibility. Exactly. Um, I shoot Love weddings um, as well. And so if that I'm lens is wedding, great oof, for that. Oof. If I'm, I can go like this, I can get so many shots <laughs> and not move. Like, <laughs> so true. It makes me lazy. You know, <laughs> I will say that because with my prime lenses, I would be moving. You're forced I'm to forced move. To, move. Mm -hmm. yeah. to get those that, different perspectives. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that makes sense. <laughs> but we did a little bit of that cleanup, y'all. Ama- that looks so good. Like, come on. I'm amazed. So we've cleaned that up. Now I'm going to go ahead. We're going to start with, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to start with <laughs> selective color and kind of make our way and just kind of play with these sliders. So I'm going to bring down a little bit more of cyan in there. I like how that kind of toned down her skin. Yes, it looks so good. Yes, I Ooh, like Thank you, Cody, lot. for the reminder. In 40 minutes, we'll be doing an artist spotlight. So Ooh. yeah, if you want to nominate yourself or someone else for a future one, go do that now. Um, feel free to fill out the form, at just as Cody said, above the chat. <laughs> um, so yeah, super excited. I'm excited to check out the uh, portfolio. Yes, yes. In a bit. Super fun. All right, I'm going to go to, I think... Science, yeah, let's go to our science. And I really want this guy to, ooh, that teal. Mm-hmm. That teal is really giving. It's so beautiful. I think, yes. I think you, they, like, there's such good harmony between, like, the teal green mm-hmm. with her orange. Mm. Um, oh, I love that. Skirt, I love that call you know? out. Yeah. Like, look at that. Because you know, like, blue and orange usually are mm-hmm. really good, you know, combo. But, yes. like, even just, like, the green and the orange looks really good. Yep. Too, oh, absolutely. Like, mm-hmm. look at that. So we just messed with, we did that selective color focused in our, on our uh, science. And you can see what that already did to our cloud mm-hmm. or our sky. Like, come on, Teal. We love to see it. <laughs> what I'm also going to do, if y'all were with us yesterday, I talked a lot about yes. the black, selective color blacks. I love to do it. Add and there's a, a lot color. of blacks in this, like, yes. because it's such an already like moody yes. dark shot. There are so many blacks in here, so you can just kind of like mess around and you can just see how, like, do you see the colors that it's bringing into the, like the shadows? Like Mm -hmm. you can really do so much. And then again, if it's too much going on, you can bring down that opacity. And sometimes I bring down the fill as well. And so it's just subtle. You can see like really over here in the corner, more so with this, the, the wall here, like, Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I really like that. Let's see, what else can we do? I think we're kind of, I might go to hue and saturation just to see what else we can do in these science. <laughs> like you can see how Whoa. you can just keep messing around. I still like the teal. Yes. I want to bring up the saturation a bit, bring up some. Um, Fairy's asking, what is your dream camera and lens? Oh, um, that's a good question. <laughs> I really don't even know if I have an answer. I think before I got my EOS R, that was probably like either, I thought I really wanted the R5 the mm-hmm. because I was like, okay, I have the Canon 60 for a while. I want to go mirrorless and the R5 just seemed like the best thing to exist right now (laughs) for photographers. I, um, but it, she was a coin. She was expensive. She was like the $4,000. And I said, ma'am, like, we can't do that. (laughs) I don't, mm, I don't know about y'all, but you know, maybe one day I'll have 4k to throw on a, on a, uh, (laughs) on a body, a camera body. (laughs) Right. And I'm speaking that into existence. One day I will. But today, today was not that day. Okay. Mm -mm. (laughs) So, my, I just knew I wanted, I wanted more, um, I wanted a setup that was more just accessible. Like I could just do more with it um, instead of always feeling like I was restricted. So that's why my focus was getting that lens. So the 28 to 70, once I got that, I really got my dream set up at that point. Right. I didn't, I didn't need the R5. I think I just got the, I not even think I got the EOS R. <laughs> I was like, you don't think you are, you have it in your camera bag. <laughs> in my camera bag um <laughs> i got the eos r because it was a it was you know can, i think it's canon's like first mirrorless or something yeah. of that sort um and it was a lot cheaper i think it was like oh maybe 1.2k for me to get it and then i could spend the extra money on my lens so the lens think, yeah because sometimes lenses can be <laughs> equally if not more expensive mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. like absolutely yeah, I, I honestly find lenses to be more important than the oh, body. Absolutely. Like I always tell people, like if you can, you know, get a decent camera 
um, but spend more of your money on your lens, you'll be happy. Like even yeah. when I first started my photography, like I used my first camera was an EOS, oh Canon Rebel SL oh one, like one of the Rebels, like and it yes. was like the SL one that was like the really mini camera. And I used to use the kit lens and I felt yes. like, okay, this is cool. And then I got the nifty 50. When yes. I tell y'all yes. game changer, game changer, like game that changing. just, just getting that piece of, 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 of glass, getting that, the nifty 50 compared to the kit lens that I use. Yeah. You can immediately see the and difference. And that thing's not even quality. expensive. So oh no, that was like a hundred dollars. If you're looking for a starter lens, that is oh, the way to go. Like mm-hmm. any 50, like you can do wonders yeah. with the them. 50 1.8 I think yeah. is what it is yeah. yes yes I Amazing. absolutely loved that lens <laughs> all right Robert so. says yep that lens I think he's talking about the 28 to 70 or 24 mm-hmm. 70 is a recommended lens to shoot weddings yeah yeah percent yeah. 1000 percent. and before the 28 to 70 came out I wanted the 24 to 70 for that reason like if I ever shot I don't do weddings often because ooh, it's it's a lot in your body. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot mm-hmm. of physical activity um, that I'm not prepped for. <laughs> but let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest here. Same. But <laughs> it is just the versatility. Like you can capture so much. And even on my shoots, like I was using the 28 to 70 here. It was great to zoom out and take in more of this environment. But if I wanted to zoom in and get more of her. As my focus, I could do that with one lens and not have to grab my camera bag to go grab something else. Absolutely. Awesome. Love it. But what are y'all feeling with this photo? Ugh, how are we feeling? It's looking gorgeous. I, uh, I think so. Let us know in the chat. Yes, how are let we us know. Liking the vibe. Yes. What are you guys getting from this? <laughs> yes. And let's Oof. look at it compared to the original because that's going to be a story in itself. Yes. Oh, so good. Um, Fairy says buying a thousand body without a decent lenses is like having blurry eyes without a pair of glasses. Like, come on. <laughs> well, That's exactly well it. Fairy, That's exactly well it. Very, very much so. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is our before and that is our after. Wow. Oh, what a vibe. Like, oh, I just edited this photo maybe like three weeks ago and I'm just like, wow, re editing it just. It's giving come. me life. Oh, I just mm-hmm. love again that super super woman type vibe. The- like you would never guess that you shot this in a you said a college or a yeah, university. Yeah, it, it was yeah exactly like, on their campus. I would think that this would be in in some like architectural travelers like no. spa or something. No. Like I'm telling y'all, you don't know what is in <laughs> your your home state in your neighborhood. Like you can really just play around explore. And, and, explore, and explore, just explore. So we got this shot that we did. We got this one. Um, again, focusing on light. Um, I think finding ways that finding ways to play with light is really, really important. Um, because I, again, I would, yeah. I, I like a lot of my, my work is still with even lighting, but if I can use full sunlight in any kind of capacity, um, I definitely encourage y'all to do that. And I'm going to, ch- I'm challenging myself to do that more often yeah. as well. Even with this shot, you could see, um, this was another ass. So it's the same location. It's just another part of the building. Wow. Um, and you can see the light was coming through this, like whatever these were, there's like some openings. So light was coming through and I just loved the lines mm-hmm. in the shot and just how beautiful that looked. Um, and I just loved how I wanted to place her kind of in between the lines. I didn't want any kind of lines on her like body or, or any of those shadows to get on her body or her mm-hmm. skin. Um, but I just loved how it looked in the background. So that's so good. another way, like if you go to this place and this was at maybe 10 a.m. If you go to this place towards sunset, you won't see any of these lines. The, the, the sun would have moved. It would have just been all like just one specific, like the wall wouldn't have any had the wall wouldn't have had any kind of shadows or lines on it. Um, Same thing with the ground. So it's really great to explore locations at different times of day. Yes. um, See with sunlight, sunset, see what, you know, because it's a different vibe that it'll give you every single time. Yeah, absolutely. Basically embrace the light. Embrace the light. Embrace all kinds. Exactly. Don't run away from it. That was me. I used to run away (laughs) from it. 
I used to walk away from it, but now I think all of us do, right? Because it's kind of one of those things that everyone gets taught in the beginning yeah. as photographers, like especially if you start out in natural as a natural light photographer, mm-hmm. you're like, okay, well, the most flattering, you know, is the exactly. soft open shade like exactly. you know that kind of thing but then once you start venturing out it, you know it can get it can get pretty cool exactly you, you know, know there's just so much you can do with so especially much. with the light that you have access to um I'm a very simple photographer so I just I don't I try not to bring anything extra if anything I might have like I don't know like a reflector with me um nice. but a lot of the times <clears throat> I'm just going, I'm just, it's just vibes over here. We're just yeah. going to go wherever go with the, the day is taking us and the shoot takes us is where we're going to go. Well, fantastic work. Um, Denise commented, love the teal sky on that other image. Yes. Uh, Fairy Come says on. it looks a bit horror vibes. Oh, maybe like, <laughs> maybe she's a villain instead she's a of a villain. hero. Oh, I love Oof. it. I love it. <clears throat> I mean, damn that it. might have to be the story. Like, yes, you know. yes. Oh yeah, she's, she's like ready for vibes. vengeance. She's ready for <laughs> vengeance. She's like someone wronged her. Somebody wronged her. Somebody wronged her. So now she's <laughs> gonna get her revenge. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, I love awesome. It. So we have this shot here. I just went ahead and I added um, one of my presets onto it and brought up the exposure. So it's not a huge difference that you're seeing there. I always love to bring up my shadows, especially you can see, I want to make sure I can see my subject's face because mm-hmm. this, you know, it was, it was a birthday shoot. So you want to see her face, you know, right. and then I might come in here at a little bit. Sometimes in some cases I might not feel the need to go into Photoshop. I might be able to just do everything yeah. in, in Lightroom, which is really great. One of the things that I love in Lightroom as well is um, this color grading, um, the little circles or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I, right. Yeah, yeah. I love these um, just to play around and see what colors I can add to my highlights, my shadows, my midtones, um, and see how that also kind of gives you a different perspective with your photos. Um, I have no science behind this. I think the one thing <laughs> y'all can tell is there's no science behind anything that I do. Um, I just kind of mess around yes. until I get Ooh. something that I like. Oh, that's so pretty. You know, that just kind of, and then even then you can kind of, you want to make it a little darker. You mm-hmm. can, if you want to bring up the color, bring up the highlights and that, and you can as well. But I just kind of. I feel like this this is a good thing like I feel like for anyone who's in the chat or who's joining us right now do this next time you do a shoot explore and experiment without yeah. having a plan or without like you know um doing your normal process maybe just like try having fun and playing mm-hmm. around and see what the results yep. end up being because I feel I, like that's a good exploration like exactly thing, if you can you know? if you can give yourself um if you can give yourself just like that grace to just be free. Yes. I, when I plan for my shoots, I am going to plan as far as like location, maybe like what they're wearing. And then we get there. I used to do like, I'll still sometimes maybe come up with like a Pinterest board of, of poses if I need sure. it, but you really want to leave space for freedom and just kind of creativity to come in and just like, especially when you're with your client, I am a very bubbly and friendly person. So I like to vibe off people's energy and kind of make sure, you know, I'm really hype. I will be your number one hype woman yes, when we yes. shoot. Um, that, so yes. that way, 100%. you know, we can just kind of go off of how you're feeling and you start to feel a lot more confident and you want to try different things. It's really important to me to kind of leave space and freedom for all of that to occur. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> uh, Raj says, great shots. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. So awesome. fun. So again, yep. So you can just kind of keep playing around and you can start to get a different look, a different vibe, Seriously. even not even going into Photoshop and just kind of color grading with um, the tools that are already in I mean, it's such a strong image already. Like what would you even need to Photoshop? I really, exactly. Like I just, I don't need to do anything, you know, it's okay. I'm it's just okay. going to leave it as it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to show you guys is a recent project that I am currently editing I thought it'd be cool and fun to talk through it and edit it um with you guys because I am not nowhere near done (laughs) and if the two girls my two friends that are that are in this shoot if you guys are watching this the photos are coming soon I promise (laughs) 
<laughs> but um, had to, you had to throw that out there. I had to throw that out there in case they're like, you know, my friend, my friend is someone she watched yesterday and she was giving me props. I'm like, I wonder if she's going to be watching today because I'm going to be editing her on this live stream. I love um, it. But this is when I talk about getting trigger happy. You guys, I am I like I don't even know how many photos there's 400 photos in here. It's too much. Like it was excessive. But you know, you it's know, pretty darn good though. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes hmm, if it makes you feel better, I'll, I'll I'll get into like the 600 800. Oh, really? Okay, so that makes yeah. you feel better. <laughs> yes. Cuz I'm also trigger happy. Sometimes I'm just like Edara like was it really that serious? You know but sometimes what? when it the is. inspiration is flowing, you take yeah, it. You it receive is. it. It's that serious. It's that serious. Um, so essentially with this shoot, what really went into it? Um, I knew that the only colors that I, I, I knew I wanted them to wear like yellow and white of some capacity. Again, this wasn't even the location that I was going to. The one that I was going to was kind of like this um, I think there were like these stairs, like these white stairs that I was going to go shoot at. I had like fabrics that I wanted to incorporate. It was a completely different shoot. Then I was driving. I drove past this building. I think I have a photo that shows like more of what the building looked like. You can see that like the palm trees that were there. Um, I think it was a costume shop. Like it was a costume oh shop gosh. that was closed. And I really just kind of loved the, the the vibe and the the, the feel that the space was That's giving and so sometimes again your cha your plan might change you might be driving and you'll see a location and be like you know what what I wanted to do I don't want to do that anymore <laughs> I want to switch it up and do something else and I just felt like it gave the photos more of a tropical like breeze kind of vibe to mm -hmm. to the shoot um, yes. And so this was, and then one of the things that I love to do, I talked about it yesterday. If I love to go to the beauty store, or excuse me, go to the, the craft store, go to like Joanne and get like the little stickies. So these were like yes. the pearl stickies because I, I really loved her earrings. So I wanted to kind of continue the pearl look around their eyes. I love so it. So sometimes you want, you can get really creative with that as well. So we're going to go so ahead. Good. I know we've been editing some shots that are like further out. Let's try to do a portrait. So a portrait, a close up one. Yes, a yes. close up portrait. So I love that. I'm gonna edit this shot with y'all. Okay. Just so you guys know, we have less than 20 minutes until we do our artist spotlight. So make sure to stick around so we can check it out together. Yeah. You know, um, hype them up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, come on over to Behance, you know, ask some questions, um, interact with Idara. I'm sure yes. she'd love it. So. I will absolutely love it. So this was Beautiful. the final image Ugh. that I had. I edited this maybe like a week ago. So that's the before, and this is the final image that I did. Oh my gosh. So we're going to kind of see who knows if we're going to get the same image or if we're going to get something right. else. We're just I mean, both images. I mean, even the unedited image is like stunning. Isn't it, isn't it giving? Oh yeah, it's my gosh. Just like perfect. <laughs> she's just, she's so beautiful, man. I know. Oh. <laughs> so um, the first thing I want to do here um, is I am going to um, take this photo into Photoshop because I think that there's a lot that I can do with the colors. Um, the yellow in here, I can kind of play around with the, the, the tone and the, the hue and saturation of the yellow. I really also love um, her white as well. So kind of do I want it to be a white that's reflective or has like yellow tones to it in it? Or do I want it to be more of a pure white? Just kind of playing around and seeing what works best for the shot. But the first thing that I'm going to do to prep for it, I'm going to throw on a preset mm. that I made. Mm -hmm. just to kind of get things started and then lift Perfect. up i'm gonna actually keep this down and lift up my shadows my face yeah let's do that so nice so that way we just kind of get started with the image so we're gonna start there and i'm gonna go ahead and set it into photoshop again presets are great because yes. it's just like a quick start to your image and then you can kind of um build on top of that it's like you know from that point it's just building blocks mm -hmm. so i'm gonna duplicate my background the first thing that i'm gonna do we're gonna go ahead and do some 
skin editing she already has really really good skin yes um so there's not much i'm gonna do there again like we said yesterday i always like to keep the skin like natural as natural as possible <laughs> i don't want it to look over edited or um like it's not the person that i'm shooting with so i have right. an action again you That's can right. purchase actions somewhere on the yes. internet just they're out crazy. there google just, them yes yeah, she got some them. as well um, so I'm going to go ahead. I just added my action by pressing this play button and you can see here it's separated, um, separated our image into two different layers where you have your skin and then you have your texture layer. So then skin again, more so focusing on like blending and then texture focusing on like the texture of the skin. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, the skin layer. And I'm also going to copy the texture layer. Mm -hmm. You can see that. I like to do this, a friend showed me this tip. I like to do this when there's certain parts of the image that I want to keep sharp. So you right. can see immediately it made the sh image really sharp, which I don't want. I don't want her whole face to look this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer mask and then I'm gonna invert that layer. So then that way um, the, sh the sharpness that I just added is hidden and I can use the eraser tool to really kind of only sharpen the parts of the image that I feel like should right. be sharp. Yeah, so. and that could easily be all the jewelry or the mm -hmm. little like exactly. stickies. <laughs> exactly, girl. You you know exactly where I'm going. I'm going yes. to her earrings. I'm gonna sharpen her earrings. Make sure that it's on um, a, the color black, so you can go ahead and erase and bring that sharpness in. So you can see her earring there is a lot sharper. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come up here to the the the. Actually, I'm going to do this earring over here. Nice. Bam. I just love the, the little pearls. Yeah. Her eyes. I feel like because her earrings are like already a circle. So it's like there's like this roundness. Mm hmm. It, it adds so much. And I'm telling you, like, sometimes, sometimes. I I, I plan for things to happen and sometimes it's just the spur in the moment. I just, I have these pearls. Like if you guys see my self portraits, I use these same pearls in a lot of them. Um, so I had them in my bag already. And so when I saw her earrings, I was like, cause sometimes I don't, again, I don't, I don't like to play stylist. So I'm just like, Hey, these are the colors I want. Do you have anything, <laughs> especially if I'm doing a, a fun shoot, this is, was just a shoot that I did with friends. Yes. Um, I asked her if she had, you know, anything that she thought would be great to wear at the shoot. And so she came with these earrings and I immediately thought I have these stickies in my bag that I can use. Nice. I also sometimes like to come in and sharpen the eyes. So they just kind of pop a wee bit more. So I'm just gonna kind of do that. Oh and yeah. And so you can see like her eyes Looking are- Looking good. Yes. And then I might come and get like these buttons a little bit. And I really love this shirt. So I'm just kind of I know yeah. the pattern or the yes. like eyelet. Mm -hmm. I really, really love that. So you can see so cool. our image is a bit more sharper. Her, her eyes are sharper, the jewelry, her, her top, <clears throat> but we don't want to over, like, I don't want her lips to be sharp. I don't want her face to be sharp. So those are parts of the image that I just wanted to keep as is. Yeah. So there's that. Now I'm going to come down to my, um, the skin light, the skin layer that I copied over and we're going to go to our brush tool and get the mixer brush tool. And we're going to start our frequency separation. <clears throat> Again, um, I really, I'm not the best at explaining this process <laughs> at all. So I encourage everyone, if you're interested in learning how to do frequency separation, it's, um, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Yes, 100%. So you can kind of like learn all of that. The way that I kind of think about frequency separation, um, as far as as the specific aspect of it, I see it as like blending. So yes. if I have like, you know, when I, I think I brought this example up yesterday, if you're doing your makeup <laughs> and you're doing like, you know, I'm, I have my highlighter that's in my T-zone and then my contour, but between my highlighter and my contour, I want it to be a bit more smoother or like blended. blended. Yeah. Or if you have aspects of the face that just kind of like, it's a little harsher you want to blend things out mm -hmm. i find that doing this is really really nice for that yeah it's like blending the tone of the skin exactly that's all you're really doing is blending the tone of the skin i love it so we're just kind of coming 
So I yeah, see. I'd love to know in the chat, have any of you guys done or tried the frequency separation technique? Let us know. I feel and like I, it's something that you have to like practice yes, over and over and over again. Absolutely. To get it right or to like be comfortable with it, you know? Absolutely. And I just do like small circles so I don't make like any like, because if, if I start to make drastic, you can see how like yeah. that's like, you don't want to like nope. blend or smooth out everything. You just kind of want to make small circles and small areas. So we'll make nice. this brush a little smaller. Yeah, that looks so good already. Yeah, I really like where that's at. So it was subtle. I feel like you have to like turn off the layers and then turn yeah. it on to like see oh, the yeah. difference. Oh yeah, you have to, because if not, you're just kind of like just doing it. And then you're like, oh wait, like that was a bit too much. <laughs> I'm gonna come to the texture layer, go to the patch tool. I know she has this little little guy over here. We're gonna get rid of him. <laughs> you, you are not welcome in this house, sir. All right. <laughs> I also want to keep like she has like just beauty marks that I want to keep. I don't want to mess with those. Right, right. You still want to keep aspects of your subject and make sure they still look. Yeah, things that are like unique to them. Yeah, for sure. There's beauty and you know we aim to marks. enhance, not yes. to change. <laughs> not to change. Not to change. So I don't know how much of a big difference that was. Okay, you can see like here, <laughs> yeah. up here on her forehead, I kind of blended out some spots as well. Yes. And then that's one spot that I took I mean, Charity has incredible skin. So exactly. I mean, so I really didn't need to do much of anything. You know. Yeah. This one spot here I want to blend out. Yeah, that's better. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Took care so of that nice. little guy. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're good there. The next thing I'm gonna go and do, we're gonna head to our dodging and burning. Again, I really love this um, to really highlight and enhance certain aspects of the face and then pull back from other areas or features or things of that nature, um, just to kind of enhance the overall look of who I'm shooting. Um, so I'm gonna come in again, make sure this is on black. Mm -hmm. Wait, or is it needs to be just less alive? It needs to be on white. <laughs> yep, it needs to be on white. Make sure your opacity is not that much because you don't want it to be too crazy. So I brought my opacity down to six. I'm just going to go in to like the T zone area and just add a little bit of highlight there. I'm going to make this smaller. Come into her eyes, her teeth as well. Just the white. So anything <laughs> that you kind of want to like highlight and make a little yeah. better in the face. So beautiful. So if I wanted to, do I want to do that? Mm, maybe. <laughs> make the white a little bit wider. I love that you're not afraid to like kind of go in close on the subject. Oh yeah. You sometimes you just gotta just <laughs> Yeah. You just gotta do that. Especially um especially with shooting i love like i love portraits headshots like i love like headshots this. like it just kind of i feel like keeps... headshots are intimidating sometimes yeah especially one thing that i don't do the best job yeah, at what are your I... best tips for headshots <laughs> best number one thing warn whoever you're shooting with so let them know that you're coming especially depending on the equipment that you're, that you're using close. yes yeah. I sh because I shot this with that 20 to 70, which is a massive lens. So as I'm getting closer to her face, she's just like, whoa, she's like, like, whoa. you're in my bubble. <laughs> that's true. And that's something to like, keep in mind when you're working with models, you really have to like respect them and yes, like, respect you know, their space. Make, make sure that they feel good and feel safe. And, yes. um, and yeah, like hundred percent, the bubble thing, right? Like yeah. you have to just communicate. Exactly. Focus. It's their space too. It's like, their space too. <laughs> mm -hmm. 100%. Like you need to, you want to do what you can as like the photographer. Yes, absolutely. But be respectful of their space and be mm -hmm. mindful of that as well. Yes. Yes. Um, J Boogie Poetry says, Idara Ekpo, I hope I could do a future project with you. I really oh, love your work. Thank oh. you. Come out, to, listen, come out to Arizona. I'm always like looking for uh, more people to work with. So if you're ever out here, send me a message and we can do that. Let's do it. Yep. D uh, follow her on Instagram. Send me Get a little DM. Her, little DM. <laughs> um, 
Robert says, Pixelum Perfect has a great video for frequency separation mm. and even actions. Yes. Yes. Great job. Thanks for sharing that, Robert. Yes. So we can see here, we did a little bit of frequency separation and then the dodging and burning just to kind of bring that out a little bit. Now we're going to head to um, coloring. So this is where, again, the fun part happens. The fun part happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start off with um, her skin and just kind of playing around with it. I'm going to remove some of that cyan that I saw there. And again, I just kind of slide and make small adjustments to get what I feel. So like mm -hmm. you can see how red it was and then now it's a little bit more subtle. Yeah. So nice. I'm going to leave that there for now. So I'm going to click well, I think I have some homework. I'm gonna definitely do a headshots <laughs> next time. Yes, do some headshots. And work on my color grading. <laughs> it tells a different story. Like even if you look here, so I have like the headshots, but then sometimes some shots I pulled out a little bit more, you know? Ooh. Or See, that, I, that's my vibe. I love mm -hmm. pulling out like like with and adding that environment. Yeah. And then adding in the environment again, just like we were talking about earlier. Yes. So sometimes it's like really, really close up and personal, and sometimes it's like you know, yeah. you want to pull back. So they both tell different stories. Yes. Love it. Um, under five minutes, you guys, until Artist Spotlight. Yes. So close. We're so close. So We're close. so close. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, Jay Boogie says, I followed you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Alicia says, do you guys pay for all of the Adobe Creative Suite or just a specific bundle? Great question. Um, I pay for everything. I have like yeah. the whole entire, and the reason why, you know, it's so funny when at first I was like, oh, I only need Lightroom and Photoshop. And then there's just sometimes where I'm like, you know what? You never know when I'm going to need to use Premiere or I'm going to need to use like InDesign or, yes, or Illustrator, <laughs> Illustrator, like vector files, you exactly. know, like sometimes like you need brushes and they come in the, you know, exactly. in vector files instead. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I got the whole thing just because it's, I will constantly have access to everything. And then plus it kind of encourages me to play around. Like sometimes I've done some personal videos that I can edit in Premiere and just play around, especially when I, when I talk about wanting to do color grading, like mm -hmm. I can, you know, utilize that, that application for that. So um, definitely if you want to explore, it's great. If you feel like you just need one thing, that yeah. one thing works for you. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see now great answer. we have a couple of minutes left, but I wanted to really focus on the background, right? So you can see that we yes. made a change there, but now her face, ooh, we don't want that. We wanna kind right. of go back to what we had before. So we're just gonna go ahead and erase. This is why I really love Photoshop because I can really come in here and just be separate. Be pretty selective. Mm -hmm. Be very, very selective on what you want. And then if you are shooting on a, a Mac, if you press like the backslash you can bring up Ooh, the little mass yeah the little mass so you can see um that's a good little tip doing. yes i love this because especially when i'm editing um a photo like you can see how the skin was impacted that we were focusing on the right. backdrop on the background but the skin was was hit as well mm -hmm. so i want to make sure that as i'm coloring this in that i'm not doing this because now right. i'm going to have a spot that um, I didn't mean to mask out. Yeah. And you can kind of switch between the white and the black to erase and clean up. Nice. And this is while having the layer mask selected. Yes. Oh, I just made a mistake, I think. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> right, it's like that red is so... <laughs> The red is so. Oh, there much. you go. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. That's we're good. Oh, we're that good looks there. so good. I'm obsessed. Yeah, we love it. We love it. We love it. Oh. Love it. Oh, Alicia says thank you for all your input. I'm so excited to get started. It's long overdue. Yes. Yes, girl. It's never too late to start photography it's never and learning too, never and all of that. Never too late. I'm gonna go to my whites too. I really okay. want to focus in on here, on her shirt. Again, you can kind of mess around if you want. To add some science to the whites, you can do that. If you want to remove, just kind of play around. I really want this pure white kind of color. So I'm going to pull back from really everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that really way. looks good because then it kind of like, you know, 
then it makes the yellow pop even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see how that kind of like adds a little bit of contrast there between yeah. the backdrop and our subject. You want them to stand out a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go to the hue and saturation. Mm -hmm. I really am feeling like this yellow could, we can continue to play around with. Like you can just keep changing Ooh. the tone. If you want more of like a highlighter type of color right. and you wanted to bring that up, like you could do that and then just erase and kind of make sure that it's not impacting your subject Yes, and their skin tone. To just like, There's just so much freedom that you have there and you can how like I really like I actually like this highlighter kind of color to it you know you just you might have one idea and then you play around and you get something else yeah and that's the beauty of having everything on a separate layer is that you exactly. can just kind of see which direction exactly. you like and enjoy and then you know if you change your mind oh yeah that's a pretty yeah color too. actually I'm going, I'm going to go back here <laughs> that is what I want right this feels here. very like LA like yeah like, LA vibe it? here. Yeah. It's an LA vibe. Like with the palm trees mm -hmm. and the, the warmth. Mm -hmm. An LA mm -hmm. vibe in Phoenix, Arizona. Come on. There you go. See? <laughs> All right, you guys, we are ready for our artist spotlight. So get excited, y'all. <laughs> All right, let me share my screen real quick. Cool. All right. Are we ready to meet our artist? <laughs> I'm ready. I am ready. Awesome. Perfect. So we have here, and I hope I'm not butchering her name, but it's Clara Lorada or Clara Lorada. So pretty, by the way. <laughs> Gorgeous. If you're in the chat, say hello. Um, but this is Clara. And let's see about the artist. I kind of want to know a little bit about her just like so have an idea. Um, ooh, she's from, she's based in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Ooh. And her work explores identity through the lens of how we affect and are affected by others with the focus on the, how this influences the way we see and interact with the world. So she's got a lot of self portraits. She's like, kind of like you Oh, we love um, it. in a way. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe we can start here on this personal effects 2018. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. This is like a silver gelatin print. Wow. That's incredible. Okay, so maybe this one isn't a self-portrait, but it's like her kind of like printing through like jewelry. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Is oh, this so nice. evidence? <laughs> oh, this is oh, so wow. beautiful. That is really cool, actually. So much like shape and form is awesome oh through an examination of the way we hold on to objects and memories wow yes. okay that's super cool i love that very fun i wonder how she did this like yeah if it was like i mean i know it's a silver gelatin print but i'm like the process of that is like so insane yeah um okay let's look at some of her self-portraits because i'm i'm curious what her vibe is here whoa wow. do you see this like, I wonder if I can, oh, never mind. <laughs> Let's see. How can I get out of this? Oh, there you go. There okay. Go. <laughs> I wanted to see if I can zoom in, but maybe not. Oh, there you go. Okay. There we that go. That looks yeah. better. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, I'm trying to figure out how she photo, how do they photograph this? Wow. So it's a layered digital print, then vinyl, and then acrylic. Whoa. Okay, so she's kind of like, instead of like showing our face, she's kind of like more obscuring. Yeah. And like using different textures and, and things in front of her. That's really cool. I love that. because And I love how some of her features still peek through, yes. but you can't like yes. fully identify her. Exactly. Wow. wow. That's so interesting. In tandem with the earth. I love the colors. It's very... um very abstract for sure yeah a more abstract self-portrait but you're right she does like show a few of her features mm -hmm. wow oh, i love this i'm curious like the process mm -hmm. i want to see the process 
Oh, whoa. Look at how, like, her little, like, uh, exhibition. Mm -hmm. Her installation. That's so cool. Here's another one. Ooh. Wow. That's so cool. In tandem with the world. Ugh. I want, like... I would love to see the process behind this because... This yes. is so beautiful. I know. It's almost like it, it kind of has that vibe of like when you're like, you know how people sometimes take portraits like behind like um, a, a shower mm-hmm. door. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it looks really cool. Vibe. Like it's very kind of, you know, blurred out. Yeah. Less, you know, more ominous. <laughs> yeah. No, it does look like that. <laughs> yeah. Robert says her self-portrait is cool with the shadows. Nice. <laughs> Very cool, Clara. Here's another one. Oh, yeah. See, this looks kind of like showery, like, Mm -hmm. you know. Where is she located? Uh, Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. So cool. So interesting. Ooh, I love this one. Is she wearing like a fabric over her head? It looks like she is. That's so cool. I wonder where she like draw drew this inspiration from. I mean, I know it's like personal identity, but it's mm-hmm. like, like what's the story behind like obscuring <laughs> mm-hmm. herself and like all this stuff, you know? Which is kind of like very opposite of like your vibe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like I'm out here. I'm, I'm out here. It's me. <laughs> and then oh, wow. you know, here's Clara being like, I'm mysterious like and I know. love that because you can really there's there's just so many different ways that you can capture yourself yeah in and just forms. like how you are like you know for yourself parts it's like very up close to mm-hmm. hers is also pretty tight in yeah like it's exactly. very it's very up close it's very up That's close really and personal unique. Ooh, yep these are really great cool. these are really yeah. great kind of has like a bit of um like an old school vibe too mm-hmm. oh yeah absolutely you know? Yeah, very cool. Okay, let me see one of her 2019 self-portraits. So unique. And I love what she's been doing. I know. A series of 50 self-portraits over the course of a landmark birth year investigating the impact of experience on identity. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see. Whoa. Wow. Okay, that definitely yeah, that's is l- like shower. 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 Yep, that, mm-hmm. that is cool. Artist brings us inside this process, sharing with us what happens when we listen to that voice that tells us that things need to be different. Oh, wow. So cool. Yes. Okay. Such a vibe. (laughs) Wow. Wow. The detail, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, this is, okay, this, like, kind of, like, side profile yeah I love how she's able to still maintain the detail like of whatever that is in front of the subject yes. and the actual subject yeah very cool yeah I'm kind of like a little spooked out like I'm like <gasps> like this could be a, a bit of a horror a yeah cinematic yeah, horror. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, or it could be like the 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 front page of a of a novel like you know mm, a scary novel yeah or no. like oh definitely you know. front page of a novel yes I love the motion in this one yes me too yes yes Ooh, okay. oh yeah I this, love this, this one this one's my favorite so far I think, you know what it is it's because we see an eye uh, yeah so we eye. can connect mm-hmm. with the eye <laughs> yes <laughs> But I love how it's just like the one eye peeking through and you can't, like the other one is still blocked. Like it's this just, other one's still blocked. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a peekaboo, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So unique. I want to know more. Like I want to know the process. That's for mm-hmm. sure like my thing. Very cool. Wow. Good job, Clara. This is awesome. And it looks like she's had plenty of exhibitions and mm-hmm. and things herself. Um Actually, I kind of want to see what her previous work portraits are. Let me see. Whoa. Wow. Such a difference. These are her original self-portraits wow. in 2015. That's so unique. She's wow. definitely using like textures and paints mm-hmm. and like paint and then somehow like putting Layering it all together. Yeah. Like, together. 
Okay, I love the colors in these. Yes. She definitely went more muted later down the road, mm -hmm. but. Ooh. Wow. I could see feathers. Do you see feathers? Yeah, I see feathers. <laughs> like the feathers here and then yeah. like a leaf. Wow, that is so wow. unique. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Very cool stuff, Clara. That's awesome. So definitely go check out her work. Um, seems amazing. You guys need to check it out and see all of her other projects too. Um, she has quite a few. Yeah, this is so really beautiful. So definitely, you know, peruse through her work. She's got a lot. I love that she explores also same way as you, like exploring her own identity mm -hmm. um, through kind of like textures and layers. And yeah, I think I love, I love the incorporation of the textures. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that like, even for myself, I'm like, wow, can I explore that? Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, so cool. Definitely go check her out. It's claralarada.com and you can see all of her projects and everything. Yeah. Robert says, wonder how she has shot the photos. hundred mm -hmm. percent. I want to yeah, know. I want to know it all. Like Clara, call, call, call me up. How, how, how yes. do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? Um, does Clara have a Behance? Because if she doesn't, <laughs> she should. And then that way she can talk about her process yes. and, and share with us all her secrets. Yes. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Um, amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for, you know, if you haven't nominated yourself or, you know, do so. Um, we are always wanting to find new people to to hype up and, and to check out their work. So, um, yeah, if you want to share your screen, Adara. Um, and get back to Perfect. some editing. We will do that. Uh, so cool. cool. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. So we are back to our portrait. We are yes. really making some great progress with this. Like, let's yes. just let's just see how far we've come. Okay. So this is the image we um, originally came in had. originally had. Um, we made some slight changes there. Brought some preachers nice. out, and then. We started, oh, love, Oof. love, 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 love. That is gorgeous. Sometimes I like to see, okay, so what do we, what do we have next? Let's go and really mess with channel mixer. So sometimes I come down to my blues and I can, I cannot okay. tell you why I do it, but <laughs> <laughs> I really sometimes just like how muted the tones can now be mm -hmm. colors. And so let's see what that looks like. <laughs> and it's just like as you keep editing you can just see how like the vibe of the shots can continue to change the, the overall vibe of the image yeah kind of shifts and moves yeah we'll bring down the op opacity a bit a very subtle change there i do like the color in her shirt now mm. let's see what else what else do i want to mix next up <laughs> around with I'm going to come with, again, I really, another thing that, another tip is if you are looking to do some color grading, color lookup is great. You have all these different lets that are already provided to you. So you can really just kind of click and some are more drastic than others, Ooh, but you can yeah. really just kind of click Whoa. and see, yeah. <laughs> see Whoa. How it, and then you can like mess around with the opacity okay. and the fill. That is just cool. Like, just so it gives you like a different a vibe. A different vibe. Look. Mm hmm that looks awesome. So sometimes I can just kind of mess around. I actually like this candlelight look. Yeah. And it's just real subtle. You know, sometimes it's just like the subtle things that you do to really kind of change your, your image up a bit. So yeah. I am actually, I don't want to do vibrance. I'm going to, how are we feeling about this photo, the portrait yeah. so far, y'all? How are we loving it, you guys? Um, let us know in the chat. How are we loving it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't, there's no you know it has you have to love it basically. yes <laughs> just yeah. kidding that, that's all like if it's anything that's less, all yeah no <laughs> if it's no. not love I don't want it <laughs> I don't want it I don't want it at all but you can see how even just coloring the image like yes and I feel like there's I feel like there's more of a I think with my work sometimes I try to when coloring it I think it's I I like that real aspect mm -hmm. of it like I feel like she's almost tangible like I can feel her yes. through the image and I think that it's really important tangible, to, I like yeah that word. it's really important for me to play around with the colors but not play around with it too much to where I feel like like 
the subject's not within my reach mm-hmm. if that makes sense yes. so like I said, if something's a little bit like this, this like so far we can see like, okay, like this is, you know, it's whatever it's coming together. But I feel like when you bring some of those colors back, yes. you get the real human aspect of the portrait. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I get crazy and I just, I don't want that. I want like more something that's like more dreamy and, and not, and unreal. And sometimes, mm-hmm. especially when taking headshots, I want my subject to shine through and just yeah. kind of enhance what they look like. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I know this stresses you out. <laughs> it stresses me out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just that little, for a second, I was like, mm. I know. Even me pressing cancel, like, <laughs> yes. yes, you press cancel. And I was like, wait, what just happened? Um, Robert says, looks great. Um, Alicia says, I know you can save presets in Lightroom. Is that possible with Photoshop too? Or I no? heard, I heard that this, that is possible. You can, the, Presets are like the LUTs, so you can create and save. I don't know how to do that. I believe but... you can do it in like Adobe Camera Raw. Oh, um, you can save okay. and do that. But uh, it is a little bit more difficult to, to edit a whole session, I think, in Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Like you'd probably... Yeah. I think that people... And correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, mm-hmm. in the chat, feel free to jump in and chime in. But, um, you know, you'd probably use a combination of bridge and Photoshop and, and mm-hmm. kind of figure that. But to me, Lightroom Classic just makes more sense because it's more yeah. streamlined and you can yeah. see all the images and you can, you know. And yeah. Streamline is the best word um, to use because that's, yes. that's exactly how I feel. I feel like it's more just like the, the workflow is just a lot more con- just smoother. Mm-hmm. I know I can start here and kind of build on to a you know, build up to a certain point and then come back to my starting point where I have all my images. I think that's the favorite yeah. part that I have with the, the relationship between Lightroom and Photoshop is once I'm done in Photoshop and I close that thing out, it comes back yes. <laughs> to where yes. I started. Yes. So you yeah. Can see... And like you said, like, you know, sometimes we get trigger happy. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of images and mm-hmm. the preset that you apply in Lightroom, you can apply yep. it all at once to a ton of images. Whereas, yep. I don't know, I feel like maybe Adobe Camera Raw wouldn't be able to handle mm-hmm. that many photos in there at a time, you know? So it, it would be difficult, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So only thing I'm going to come and do is I really love the teeth whitening tool. Nice. I'm going to get real up close and personal and just <laughs> kind of whiten that. Sometimes Ooh. I just, sometimes I come up to the eyes. That, and Where, how did you of... access the teeth whitening? Oh, yes. So I came over here to this little toggle brush thing, thing or brush thing. Yeah. And I pressed it and then you'll find oh, all these different wow. effects that are listed here. So, <clears throat> okay. I didn't even know that. This Whoops. is another, this is I'm another learning. great way to like, again, target certain parts of your image. If you want like just the teeth whitening, it'll give you a brush and then I can just, whatever I use on the brush, it's whitening. Mm. So you can see that that's there. I use it. Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> then delete and then you can just delete um so i bet you brush. could even like that you could probably use the teeth whitening tool for like not just teeth whitening but like oh yeah white areas even like mm-hmm. the eyes yeah you can use a little it bit so, yeah so i did it up the eyes just to kind of brighten up the eyes a little bit yes. if i wanted to brighten up her earrings i could do that <clears throat> if i felt like her white top wasn't hold on let me zoom in if i felt like her white top wasn't white enough mm-hmm. i could just kind of come in and just whiten that up a bit and right. you can see how that like just kind of switches up the image a little bit. And you yes. can also down here, you'll see a little checkbox. It'll say show selected mask overlay. So you can see <sighs> what you're actually adding that edit, adding the, <clears throat> the brush to. And then if you may end up making a mess or it kind of spilling over into some parts of your photos, you can come here, click erase. And then again, just erase and clean out. So the same thing you can do in Photoshop, you can do certain aspects of it here yeah. in Lightroom, which is really, really cool as well. Because sometimes cool. you don't, if, you, if you're just comfortable with, with Lightroom, like there's just, there's so much you can do with yeah, these Yeah, they've really built it out. Yes. Um, in a way that like, sometimes you might not even need to go into Photoshop, mm-hmm. so, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. That's what that looks like. So that's our Amazing. portrait. Sometimes I'm going to see if I want to mess with anything else. Bring up the brightness a little bit. Perfect. And I love that. So this is our before. Love it. And that is our after. 
Oh, and that's, that's so good. That's what we got. And you can even see again, sometimes when you, when I edit, like I, I might want something that's more muted. And I feel like this, I love this because it's just, again, it's the tones and the colors are there, but it, and it's really cinematic and has that, that real feel to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes like I edit, I had a version of it that this one was a lot brighter, you know, the, the backdrop was a lot brighter yes. and things of that nature. So you can really just kind of mess around and, and see there's just different i just love to see what different looks you can get mm -hmm. when you try different edits out yes so. absolutely uh, feel free so to love ask it. any questions you guys yes. we have about let's see seven minutes until we wrap this day two with idara oh, it was I know, so, much so, fun. Sad, so much fun i've had um, so much fun y'all i really I have <laughs> I'm gonna export this because I really like the this version of the image. Yes. And bam, there we go. There we go. How do y'all feel? I feel like we've we've covered quite a bit today. Yes, absolutely, a hundred percent. Oh, so good. I just, I'm now the next thing for me to do is just kind of go through and finish. Yeah, this yeah. shoot. But you can just see like all these different portraits, and I love how <clears throat> even we're taking headshots that you can get different perspectives like this one was mm -hmm. a little bit leveled and then this one i love that i shot it more at a lower a anger mm -hmm. yeah looking up at her yeah looking up at her exactly so you can just kind of play around how do you get determine them. which ones you end up editing that's a good question <laughs> it's just kind of like, I, like what's I, your process for culling i guess i i take things um by section so by if i'm shooting like with the shot with the shoot even though it was one location there were certain like several points. different poses mm -hmm. and with, like types so, of images exactly so i'll take it like you can see we started with like this tree area and then you know i was having some wider shots and then some more up close portraits mm -hmm. as well um and so i would just focus on this and just kind of pick my favorite like i try to give myself nowadays i try to give myself a limit because i will edit and edit and edit and sometimes it's like you yes. that's a little bit too much <laughs> well like you are also literally like you have so many different uh types of shots too and they're mm -hmm. all so good so exactly. i can only imagine exactly so i'm having go, to like whittle down ah uh, exactly and sometimes i just go based off of like what speaks to me first yeah. like you know and those are the shots that i edit but the one thing that i love is because i have this catalog saved on my hard drive i always 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 love to come back to my projects and see mm. okay is there a shot that i didn't edit that i feel like i can incorporate later on yeah um so you can just see all these different photo oh, like, poses so like and then you go into some of these other shots that i took of my other friend like you can just see oh my gosh how different your friends are so photogenic oh like wow they really are and, then, and they'll be like oh no i'm not i'm like no you you are no, like you are, yeah. like, you are. i can't i can't Don't do this by it. myself <laughs> like this is one of the portraits that i oh, took of, of so good my friend and you can see this was i'm gonna copy the reset so this was the before oh, wow. this is our after so again really wanted that highlighter vibrant look. highlighter yeah. look yes that's what i really loved about these images is creating yes. that look. So I added my preset, which was my base. And then I just went into Photoshop and that's when I kind of took out the things I didn't want with yeah. as far as like the mailbox and other items yeah. and then playing around with those colors with those. I absolutely love out. the shadow that she's creating yes. on that wall too. Yes. And this is another reason why, again, when you play around and shoot with full sunlight, opposed to like, again, when I would wait until the sun is setting or sunrise, mm -hmm. you can really play around with shadows and things of that nature to really kind of get a different look with your image. Absolutely. So. Um, Robert says, have learned a lot more about portrait photos and edits. Thanks, Idara. Yeah, of course. Um, Alicia also says, okay, guys, final question. You can ask another one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Best advice for someone starting from nothing, equipment, inspiration, mm. education. Okay. Maybe that is the final question. Yes. That's a, <laughs> that's that's a, that's a loaded question. question. That's a loaded question. <laughs> it's um, a three-parter. It really is. For someone that's starting as a beginner, I would say use what you have. So yes. If you have a phone, if you have yes. an Android or an iPhone, I'm hoping you're team iPhone, but if you're not, it's cool. <laughs> we don't, we don't judge on this side of the internet. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> but if you have, um, we only get whatever. judged for not watching Star Wars. That's, yes. That's all. <laughs> 
<laughs> whatever it is that you have. So um, you can use an iPhone. I love, love, I'm a part of, actually, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to show you guys this because I think it's really important to understand that you can use the equipment that you have. So I have on my website, I feel like I have a shot on iPhone. Shot on iPhone. Oh, yes, yeah, I see I that. Amazing. And you can literally Ooh. just, so this is, this is my mother. <laughs> Hey, Dara. This is my mom. Oh so my gosh, some, she's oh. took some portraits of her on, on um, Mother's Day. Gorgeous. This was from a skin shoot that I did last year for wow. Skincare That's line. iPhone. This is iPhone. That is incredible. literally an iPhone. Um, shot and edited. I did not. I just did this all on my phone. <laughs> Alicia <laughs> says, "Team iPhone 8. <laughs> Listen, an iPhone eight is still an iPhone, girl. You can still, as long as you got a camera Honestly, there. You can still use it. Yes, there, yes. I know that like I get it with each iPhone, the camera gets quote unquote better. But like as long as there is a camera on and something that's accessible in your hand, you can use it because you can play around with yes. different angles and things like that with yes, your phone. Absolutely. Even the same way you can with your. So that's what I would say <laughs> first is use the tools that you have. So if you have an yes. iPhone, use that. The second mm -hmm. thing is just start to capture your day-to-day -day, surroundings, like surroundings. Your friends. Yeah. yeah. You know, go, if you go outside and you see, I don't know, some flowers you really like and you want to capture that, do that. If you like more of those landscape photos, or if you want to get into portraits, ask a friend, a sibling, a parent, whoever, yes. if you want to take pictures of them and just kind of play around with, um, get comfortable and start to train your eye. I think that's yes. the hugest thing with photography. I think that as you kind of grow and if you start to have equipment, equipment does add like to, I guess, quality, but mm -hmm. it, you can't, you could have, if I had the equipment that I have now, <laughs> when I first started, I wouldn't have the same images. Right, right. I wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. You have to, you have to just kind of keep shooting and shooting and shooting anything and everything. Love and with time, you'll start to train your eye and be like, okay, I really love this. So this is how you develop your style. So that's mm -hmm. one way. Find photographers that you like and say, figure out, okay, what is it that I like about their work? What What is it about their style that I really like? And you don't yeah. want to copy, but sometimes you can take pointers from other creatives and be like, oh, I want to try to incorporate this into my workflow. Yeah. Um, oh, all of that comes that. together to create your own identity. Yes. Thank you so much for all those tips, Udara. Oh, love it. Please go follow her on Instagram. Check out her work on her website. Uh, we are wrapping up day two. Aww. Thank you guys so much. This was so much fun. Um, make sure to stick around for the um, the daily creative challenge for Illustrator and, you know, everything else that's going on in Adobe Live. Um, thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Bye. Udara. Thank you all so much. <laughs>